recently James Jimmy Coonan, the former boss of the famed Westies gang in New York, wants to get out of jail. He claims that since he no longer has power over a group of Irish mobsters running Manhattan's Midtown West, his imprisonment is no longer necessary. In their most recent court appeal, Coonan's legal team makes note of how gentrification has significantly altered the landscape of his former home. A prosecutor referred to Coonan as the embodiment of terror at the age of 76 due to his previous reputation, which was based on his two-decade terror reign over Manhattan's Hell's Kitchen. Under his leadership, the Westies were involved in a number of horrible crimes, such as multiple murders, drug trafficking, the grisly dismemberment of corpses for the mafia, and extortion schemes against local businesses, labor unions, and people. Court documents reveal that the Westies' brutality extended to the dismemberment and disposal of victims' bodies in the East River in three particularly gruesome cases. Additionally, the gang had connections as contract killers for the Gambino organized crime family, led at the time by Paul Big Paul Castellano until his assassination in 1985 on orders from emerging figure John Gotti. In a notable 1978 meeting at a Brooklyn restaurant, Castellano purportedly admonished Coonan to cease their reckless behavior, cautioning them to seek approval for any killings, with Castellano asserting, if anyone is going to get killed, you have to clear it with us. The critically praised book The Westies, Inside the Hell's Kitchen Irish Mob, published in 1990, vividly narrated the gang's infamous deeds. The 1990 cult classic movie State of Grace, which starred Sean Penn, Ed Harris, and Gary Oldman, was similarly based on the criminal saga of these two men. James Jimmy Coonan, his wife Edna, and a group of accomplices were found guilty in 1988 under the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, RICO. Coonan, who benefited significantly from the gang's illegal activities, was given a draconian 75 year prison term. Francis Mickey Featherstone, a former Westie hitman who became a state's witness, testified at a crucial point in the case. In the Queens, New York, murder of rival Irish mob boss Michael Mickey Spillane in 1977, Featherstone was able to avoid conviction. He then received a suspended sentence for his involvement in racketeering, which involved four murders, loan sharking, and drug trafficking, and later enrolled in the Federal Witness Protection Program in late 1988. In a recent motion submitted to the Manhattan Federal Court on a Friday, legal counsel for James Jimmy Coonan put forth an argument advocating for his release to home confinement. They contend that this move is warranted under the provisions of the First Step Act, a law enacted in 2018 during the tenure of then-President Donald Trump. Coonan's legal team claims that he has behaved admirably while incarcerated and has effectively undertaken rehabilitation. They emphasize that he had a job lined up with B and a rebar in Brooklyn, ready for him when he is released. Additionally, the attorneys Joseph Carozzo and Thomas Miriliano contended that the RICO group that Mr. Coonan originally led has been essentially dismantled. They contend that the legal actions brought against Mr. Coonan and his co-defendants as well as the natural changes that have taken place in the area over time are both causes of this breakdown. The lawsuit also draws attention to a recent medical report that describes Mr. Coonan as an elderly man with serious health issues. This includes both eyes having cataracts, not having any teeth, being partially deaf, being obese, having high blood pressure, and having high cholesterol, all of which significantly increases risk of having a heart attack or stroke. The planned release plan for Mr. Coonan calls for him to relocate to Hazlitt, New Jersey, where he will take on the responsibility of caring for his elderly wife, who is battling declining physical and neurological health. This action represents a considerable change from the setting in which he was raised and where his crimes were committed. As of now, it remains uncertain who will make the final decision regarding Coonan's request for release, as his case was previously assigned to the late Judge Whitman Knapp, who passed away in 2004. No response has been provided by a spokesperson for Manhattan U.S. Attorney Damian Williams regarding this matter. Okay that's it for now, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more character breakdowns and analysis of your favorite gangsters. See you in the next one.